And if all of us here tonight, if we can say, oh Lord, I never knew this, but Lord, I'm going to build according to your pattern. I'm telling you, the work will progress. God will support something. When he knows we are, going to, we are building according to pattern, he'll bring all the resources. He'll bring all the wisdom. He'll bring all the strength. He'll bring all the power. Think about it. I didn't know I would still be able to address you tonight, honestly. Because, you know, I left here very late last night and I got to the town by something maybe to 12. And this morning I got up after 5 and did some little, little things and got ready. Got to the church before 7. And, you know, all the time of the scripture, I have to sit down there to listen to what they are teaching. And then I have to answer questions, all those services. I have to, you know, sit down throughout the time of the uh, preaching of Sinai. And then when he finished, I have to lead the prayer. We have to rush in here. We've gone through five services today. And, you know, I'm just telling you so that you will know that God can strengthen a person to do his work. And, you know, from... I've, never, I've not taken a bite this morning, and I don't feel hungry, I don't feel tired, I don't feel anything. And, you know, if you are ready, if you are willing, I can go on preaching to you for hours as I'm standing here. I don't even feel that I've done anything today. How, why is God giving that strength? Oh, because he knows there is no idea of mine that I want to put into the thing. I just say, Lord, thy will be done. When God says sit down, I sit down. He says stand up, I stand up. He says, remove that block from there. It's, that's not the place I want the block to be. I, I tell the believer, I tell that block, you are not supposed to be there. I remove the thing from the fellow. And the people get angry at me. They took my opportunity from me. I say, God, if they beat me, you are the one that pulled me into this. You are the one that told me to remove that block from there. When you are like that, God will give you strength. He will give you power. He will give you knowledge. He will give you wisdom. He will give you everything that you need. If that building is there and the people are not willing to build on the chief cornerstone, they are not willing to have the foundation to be Jesus Christ, don't even live there. Then you yourself do not just be interested in crowds. You know, people get to the crusade field and uh, it surprises me. I, I attend some crusades, although people don't know I attend because I don't go to see it on the platform. Uh, crusades go on in Lagos and I just like to have a first hand knowledge of what is going on and I will, you know, stay with the crowd and as I stay with the crowd I see everything that they do and I see that many times the choruses take a long time and then the taking of the offering takes a long time the praying for the sick takes a long time and then when they want to give uh, the altar call, they, they say, Don't, the crowd is so much, they say, everybody here, how many of you want Jesus to be your personal savior? Because if you have Jesus, you'll be happy in life. You'll never be sad. He'll make, uh, you know, he'll make your way. Everything will be all right. He'll prosper you. He will heal you. He will deliver you. He'll protect you. They never talk about sin. They say, if you want to give your life to Jesus, raise up your hand. Everybody raises up their hand. They say, everybody has accepted Jesus as their personal savior. The Lord Jesus. These are children of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are sealed for the kingdom of God. None of them is born again. They refuse to call them forward. And, but in my crusades, if you look at some of those things, like uh, in uh, Zambia or like in Abidjan, I told the people, I said, there's no secret disciple. Open your eyes. If you want to have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you know you are a sinner. And you are doomed for hell if you die there in the crowd, wherever you are. Right now, I want you to run forward here. I'm not praying for healing now. I'm not praying for deliverance now. I'm praying for the people that know they are sinners. And you know that you are hell bound. If you do not get saved tonight, rush forward here. You know, in uh, Ghana, in, um, in Kumasi, in November, our national overseer from one country in West Africa, when he saw the people, old people, they were crying. He himself, he's a Christian, a real believer. He started crying when he saw the people. Because the Spirit of God greeted them, and they were running forward, 
educated people, highly placed people, with tears on their eyes, and they were giving their lives to the Lord. Uh, that's foundation. That's laying foundation. But if, uh, you know, we just tell them, everybody is saved, just raise up your hand, why are we deceiving ourselves? Are we just interested in the hands that are raised up? Are we just interested in saying, 10,000 came to the Lord? You know, some evangelists, uh, they are, when they are giving their reports, they will say they went to preach somewhere, 300 people, they attended that thing, and the population of the city they are talking about is not up to 300,000. I was listening to somebody recently. He said in 19, he mentioned that year about maybe about 10 years ago or more. He said he went to Uyo. And uh, in the people that came to that crusade, 200,000. My friend, even now, Uyo is, uh, you know, when you're talking about 200,000, I don't think Uyo is up 10 years ago. And all those people, when he gave the altar call, everybody just gave their lives to the Lord. Where is the foundation? Where is the repentance? Who are we deceiving? Therefore, make sure that if you are preaching the gospel, let every individual know that Christ is Savior. And that we need to repent. We need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ so that you are not just building something that has no foundation. There should be willingness to pay the price and persevere in service. If we're building, there should be willingness to persevere. Trials will come. Afflictions will come. Opposers will come. Shambalat will come. Tobias will come. First of all, they will say, let's join our ministries together. Let's build together. And we are going to assist you, Nehemiah, in the building. And if you are sharp-sighted, and if you are well enlightened, if the Spirit of God has opened your eyes, you will know they have no part, Tobias, Shambhala, they have no part in the building of the temple for our God. And you will tell them, and they are going to fight back. But you know what Nehemiah did? He called all his people. With one hand, they were building. With the other hand, they were holding the instrument of war. And he said, in the day and in the night, they never put up their clothes except for taking their bath, except for washing. He said, I put half of the people to be watching. I have put half of the people upon the walls to be building. And I divided all the walls to the house of uh, this one. I divided part of the wall. To this place, I divided the wall. He streamlined everything, organized everything. And he himself, he was behind them. And it says, the people had a mind to work. This work of the church is not, uh, you know, for weak people. It's not for people that, you know, uh, they have no spine, they have no courage, they have no boldness, and every little, every little thing they are afraid. If a familiar spirit, a girl, threatens them and somebody rises up while they are, you know, having the service and says, uh, they're speaking in tongues and interpreting and prophesying that we're going to kill the pastor if he doesn't run away from town. Immediately you hear that prophecy, or if you were not in church, when you came back, they say, did you hear the prophecy that came out when you were not around? Uh, you say, what prophecy is that? Uh, it was prophesied. The devil said he's going to kill you if you don't run out of this church and go to another place. If you are like Nehemiah, you say, should such a man as I run? Who is there? A man like me that God has given the project of building a kingdom for, the, for my God. How can I run? Let them come. Let them come. Then Nehemiah said, because I knew that the enemy had appointed them to terrify me. The enemy has people he appoints to terrify you. To tell you, if you don't run out of town, they're going to kill you. They're going to destroy you. If you are serving God, you will never die before your time. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Let the enemy roar. Let the devil seek to even devour and destroy. He says, because you have been faithful in a little thing, I will keep you in the time, in the day of adversity. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord delivereth him from them all. Not one bone of the faithful will be broken. If you are serving God, it will keep you till the very end. Let's look at Luke chapter 14. From verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower? Sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. Sit down and count the cost. And before you ever go on, say, O oh Lord, I know that in this work you have given me to do, persecution will come, but Lord, I am ready. I know that people will gossip. I know that people are going to almost tear me apart with their gossip and backbiting and rumor mongering and their tail bearing. But, oh Lord, I am ready. I have counted the cause. I have known that this is the best thing I can do in my life and I will do it. You count the cause that no matter what the enemy is doing, what the enemy is saying, you are going to do the work of the Lord. And once the work is begun, complete consecration, consistent and constant labor to increase in knowledge and skill and spiritual wisdom will be very necessary. Be willing to pay the price, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, I've had some of these people, they, they've come to me before, and uh, I've got used to them. Uh, one of them came to me many years ago, and uh, while he was talking to me in my sitting room, I was there at the University of, the La of Lagos at that time, still lecturing. And um, he told me that he had some message uh, from God. I said, all right, uh, keep on speaking. So he started speaking that uh, if I didn't believe what he believed, if I didn't go this way and that way and everything and drop everything I was doing now, that God said he was going to do this and do this and do that. Oh, I said, I'm a child of God. God has not spoken that to me. He has told you, you can go your way. Until he tells me, I will keep on doing what I know he has shown me to do. Oh, he got mad at me. He said, we fasted, we prayed, and God gave us a message to come and tell you to abandon this thing, to remove symbol, to remove all that. And began to say, he said that God will deal with me, he will kill me. Uh, I said, wait, go and sit down. If I die, I go to heaven, no problem. So you cannot terrify me with God will kill me. That I'm not a person that will say because you said somebody gave you prophecy that a God will kill me. Because of that now, I will drop everything I know in the Bible and follow you. That I'm sorry, I, I don't walk that way. Then I began to talk to him. Eventually he went away. And later he came back again. Well, to cut a long story short, the work of God is still going on. What his, he told me that everything will scatter and myself, I'll be so disappointed and this and that. And uh, I've been watching, uh, I've been, you know, following up his work. His work, I think, now has broken about four times. You know, it divided and then a small group with him, another person, they divided again, you know, divided again. And, but look at this one that God is doing. Another person came to me and, you know, he said, while we're talking together, he was uh, doing his hand like this and smiling. So I said, why are you smiling? Oh, he said, you will not understand. I said, what's the matter? He said, uh, you know, a loving Jesus, beautiful Jesus is talking to me now. I said, here. Yeah. He said, uh, he said, yes. He said, uh, while he was talking to me now, his wife uh, just took the car and went out now. He was demonstrating to me a word of knowledge. Oh, I said, so that's a word of knowledge. That uh, somebody who is taking the car, God will tell you. I said, bye-bye. Then he looked at me and said, this one that you are doing will never last, will never stay. My brothers and sisters, that person, I can't even hear his name anymore now. You see, if you build according to pattern and you count the cause, prophecies may come. People can terrify you and tell you this, this, and that. Stand where you are. Be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, when I was in Mayflower, we had a scripture union uh, at school. And I was in charge at that time. And you know, Ty was militant, 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 atheistic uh, principles. 
And, uh, and I was brought up in that community, and I knew and when tie is against something, my, my, it's really against it. But, uh, you know, we were a little bit familiar. And when I was at school, even before I became a Christian, I was religious. I used to read the Bible a lot and fast a lot, even when I was an unbeliever. 1959 was, you know, a time I read the Bible, I prayed, I fasted. I wasn't born again at that time. And, uh, you know, Ty called me and said he had a report about me that I did something. And I said, no, I didn't do it. I was a, a young boy like this. And uh, when... Uh, he, he said, you did it. I said, no, sir. He called me to his office late at night. He allowed all of us to sleep. He came to wake me up. Militant, militant principal. And then he took the whip and tie as a soldier before. When he wants to beat you, he can beat. And, uh, you know, he beat me. It was hard and terrible. After beating me, he said, Kumoi, you did it. And, you know, I was bleeding. And the marks are still on my body even now. And I was bleeding. I said, no, sir. He beat me again and said, you did it. I said, no, sir. He beat me again and said, you did it. You know, even as a non-believer, I made up my mind. The truth is that I didn't do that thing. You want to beat me and kill me? Fine for you. Then, when he saw that I wasn't yielding, then he let me alone. And recently, he came to see me at Bagada just to look at, you know, what is going on. He said, Kumui, you have always been a person of principle. He said, I'm not a Christian. I don't, you know, agree with everything you say. But I respect you because you stand for what you know you believe to be true. When an unbeliever can come to tell you that. That they have dissuaded you. They have spoken to you. They have ridiculed you. They have persecuted you. They have done everything. Because I grew up there. They sent me to university. When I came back, I spent five years there lecturing there. Uh, teaching there. Now, and I know everything that went on. Sometimes we'll come to the assembly like this. And they will talk about Bible. They will talk. And he has the English and the grammar. And they will use all the grammar on our scripture union, you know, on our people there. And I will be there in the assembly. We get to the staff room. He will emphasize it again. He will print out, uh, you know, outline and use big, big words distribute to teachers and students. And I was there and I said, Lord, I'm a Christian. I will remain a Christian. More than 25 years have passed and thank God I'm still a Christian. You see, when you count the cost... And you say, come what may, uh, sticking out my neck, I will work for God. Come what may, I will work for God. Will you work for God? Eh, don't let the devil terrify you. And they say, persecution is coming. Eh, let it come. And we the first people that will be persecuted, we shall overcome. I said, we shall overcome. Yeah.